Hi guys, welcome back to another EMDR update. Uh, to be honest with you, like I don't even really want to be filming this video. <laughs> and I don't really want to be like thinking about what to say in the video. And I'm finding that that is kind of a pattern at this point because I'm having a harder time like grasping on and keeping the details in my mind with the sessions that we're doing now. I think it's been like three sessions at this point. Um, just because, you know, when you get into more deeply personal, more traumatic situations, it already is so complicated because the brain is hardwired to protect you and to keep you safe. And so it just is, you know, there's a lot of times where my brain either goes completely blank or there's so much happening and then by the end of it I can't retain what has happened. I will say today I had an experience where I told my therapist it was almost like when you're in a dream and you're going to reach out and touch something like maybe there's a treat that you want and you go out and touch it and all of a sudden you're like yanked back as if you're wearing a parachute and the wind just snatches you back. That, there was a lot of that with my brain today. Like, I would start to move in on, I don't even know what I was moving in on. That's what I was telling her. Like, I could feel it. <laughs> this all sounds so crazy until you experience it. If I were watching these videos, I would be like, huh? I don't understand. But I could almost like feel the energy, but I couldn't place whether it was a word or an emotion or a memory. It just like my brain wouldn't let me go there. So what should I talk about today? I guess what I will talk about is I, you know, I spoke about in the last few videos how I started anxiety medication and it has made a world of a difference and it has with my anxiety. However, you know, probably like five days ago, I had severe anxiety for the first time since starting the medication and all I can explain it as is my body felt like really shaky. My body felt shaky, it felt off, it was almost like the anxiety was there but mentally like my brain wasn't super anxious so my, my body was reacting but my brain wasn't necessarily reacting. And then, you know, a few days later, so now for the past three days, I've been in really a depressive state. And I just, most of the time, I feel an underlying sadness. It just feels ever present for no reason whatsoever. It's just kind of there. I just feel drained and sad and tired and just down. And then every so often I feel like an intense surge of emotion and I feel like in my chest I'm like gathering like tears like it's all just accumulating in my chest and so I'm experiencing that and it definitely came out to play in EMDR today and that's why I can't really talk about you know too in depth about my experience because it was just a really hard session that didn't feel like there was any resolution. I think up to this point at every single session I have had maybe realizations or I've had some kind of like resolution like something has kind of closed up or a negative emotion has turned to maybe a different emotion that we need to move forward on and today it just felt nothing nothing was resolved we went into the session actually because I was dealing with these depressive thoughts and my word that I go to is I feel stuck. I just feel stuck, stuck, stuck. We decided to kind of put the, you know, the last few sessions of the traumatic instance aside and we decided more to work on just the feeling of I am powerless because a lot of what I have been feeling in my depression is I am powerless. So we went completely with that today. We just you know completely like put the other stuff aside however if it came up that was okay and this is how I know that she you know my therapist is a really good therapist because I was really throwing a lot at her and 
I could see she would think about it and then she'd say, you know, let's go this way. I think we need to work on this emotion and we need to see what comes up here. And she does a really, really great job at guiding me 100% so that anytime I feel like I don't know what to feel, she knows how to get me there. And she tells me it's okay not to know where you want to go. It's okay not to know how you feel. We'll just see what comes up for you and we'll go from there. And at the end of today's session, what she did tell me was I think a lot of your problem is that you are so self-aware and you are so logical that you need to, like, you have to accept that this might be completely illogical and it's okay not to know what the solution is right now and just to trust the process and know that we are going to get there. And after saying that, you know, I told her, I said, that is one of the things right now, my brain is reverting to everything, everything negative. So I'm feeling like I'm at the point where I'm like, what if this is just another thing that I've tried that's not going to work? I'm having doubts, but at the same time, I'm telling myself to trust the process. Just let it happen. If anything, you're here, you're talking, you're putting stuff out there, you're getting it off your chest, so just trust the process. But that negative, like the negative voice in my head is telling me this is just another thing that is not going to work. And there was actually one point where she told me, I don't even know how this came up, but I, she, she said, you know, I want you to think of the time when you were maybe the happiest or felt the most content. I want you to think about what she would tell you now. And I was like, well, but my brain is already going somewhere negative. And she's like, well, what is that? Let's talk about that. And I said, well, as soon as you said that, I again went back to I never felt like this until all of this trauma happened. I never had these problems until the trauma happened. Like my brain wants to place blame somewhere because my brain is like searching for a solution. And she said, that's okay, let's go with that. So again, it was one of those things where I told her, you know, some I have a lot of self judgment and I think you can hear that in these videos. I'm kind of careful about like over explaining myself because there's a lot of judgment behind that. And one thing I told her was, you know, some of the stuff that comes up, it almost makes you feel crazy. Like in the brain, it makes sense. But when you say it out loud, you feel kind of crazy saying it. And what that was today was I literally envis envisioned like what I look like today wearing the same outfit, the same makeup, the same clothing, but there was like a lighter version of me, like what I called my angel version, and then there was a darker version of me, what I called my devil version, and in my brain, they were having a conversation. <laughs> they were having a monologue, like they, they were having a conversation, a dialogue, not a monologue. I guess I was having a monologue. So it went a little bit like my angel self was saying, hey, you know, give yourself grace. We're going to figure this out. Or I don't, I don't even know what the beginning it was. But then my devil self was saying, if I knew like what was wrong, I wouldn't be here in therapy. And I don't understand. I'm frustrated. Why do I feel this way? Why can I not move past this? And then my angel self was saying, it's okay. You're doing the work. I can't remember the conversation, but at the time it was clear as day. But, I mean, essentially, it was like, it's okay. Let it be. Like, we're going to figure it out. You're doing the work. You're doing that for yourself. And then my devil side or my negative voice in my head just kept saying, I can't figure it out. I've been doing all the work. I've been going to therapy. I've been doing all the coping mechanisms. I've been journaling. I've been, I've been volunteering. I've been doing it all and it's not getting better. And that was where the conversation ended. My, my, you know, positive self-talk was saying, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. And that was where the session ended and that perfectly encapsulated the whole session because it was just a whole bunch of, I don't know why I'm feeling so depressed. I did not feel this way before. 
it's very frustrating to not know how to fix this. I feel very powerless not knowing how to fix it. It feels very helpless, like I'm never gonna feel okay again. I feel like a burden to people, and that is one of the things. My thing just got really dark, and I'm not sure why, and it won't, it won't switch back. Uh, but one of the things we talked about was, one of the things that came up for me was, again, almost like that feeling of loneliness I don't want to use the burden, but it was kind of like a burden, but it was more a feeling of loneliness because I said, you know, it feels what I felt was lonely because I wish I had somebody that was as aware as I am about like mental health and like coping mechanisms because I wish I kind of had somebody in my day to day who's kind of going through it with me who can help me um, and I can't talk to my husband about it because then he takes that on because my husband is that kind of person. Anytime I'm feeling something, he takes it on himself and he wants to make it better and he starts stressing himself out about like, how can I do more? How can I do more for her? How can I make her feel better? Like, what can I give her? And that doesn't help. It just makes me feel more anxious. It makes me feel like more of a burden. And a lot of times I don't go in depth with him because I don't want it to almost like scare him so I'm gonna say something here that I, I don't even know that I should put this on video because I don't want people getting the wrong idea but this is where he got the wrong idea one day I was so in it that I told him it feels really exhausting being depressed all the time and I can understand why people commit suicide I don't have those idealizations. I don't ever feel any like desire to not live. I don't feel that myself. But what I was saying is I can understand it. I have empathy for it. I get it. But in his mind, he heard, you know, that was a very um, scary thing that he heard. And he took it as like me having those thoughts and understanding it. So letting myself get there. So I give that example because that's kind of like when I'm, feeling in it I tell my husband just so he knows because he knows when I'm off I let him know I'm, I'm you know I'm feeling kind of down but I downplay it and then when I speak to my mom she's like well let's fix it like how is therapy going can we up your medicine dosage like she wants to be the fixer neither of those are wrong approaches but they don't necessarily help when you're in it I had to stop filming for a little bit because it started pouring rain out of nowhere. That's a thing we have in Florida where the sky just opens and it pours. So I didn't want to be driving in the rain filming this. But the last story that I shared just of my, you know, my past and present self having a dialogue, I share that because I want you guys to know that that's essentially what the entire session was like. It was just a lot of back and forth with myself a lot of you know trying to convince myself of the good stuff but falling into the negative we're actually at the end of the session I was like oh wait I'm supposed to be focusing on the positive affirmation but my brain went right back to the negative and it was just a lot of that another thing that I find really interesting about this therapy is that you really become crystal clear on things that you've never even thought about. For example, at one point I told her that, you know, I kind of fell back into the again, I feel helpless, I feel stuck, and that made me feel the emotion of anger. I felt angry. And as she like kind of played it back to me and was asking questions, she's like, so at the end of that cycle, you felt frustrated. And I said, no, not frustrated. I feel like, I don't know if this makes sense saying it out loud, but in my head, frustrated is more of like a sad emotion. Frustrated feels like there is helplessness, but it comes like on the other side of like hopefulness at the same time. It's like you know that the reality is there, but it's not a reality for you. So I didn't use these exact terms when I was talking to her, but essentially I said frustrated in my body feels more sad. What I felt was anger. There was no being kind to myself. There was no grace. 
it was just feeling angry. And before this therapy, I never would have put such specific feelings to emotions, which sounds, that's crazy in itself. But, you know, and she said, no, that makes sense. They are two different emotions. And I think you become very crystal clear on exactly what you're feeling. And it becomes really difficult, though, to, to communicate that. Like the thing when I was saying earlier, I feel almost like a burden. I don't actually feel like a burden. Burden is not the correct word. It's just more so not wanting, like the loneliness is almost self-inflicted. Because in a way, yes, it feels good to talk to people and to get it out. But on the other hand, you know, I don't want, again, my husband taking it on, my mom trying to fix it. So it doesn't necessarily feel so much like I'm a burden as much as I just don't get the result that I want. And I don't think I'm going to go in detail about this because this video is super long and I need to wrap it up. But she did ask me, she asked me to do a session where I envision what I would need from people. So what would be the thing that would help you feel less lonely less um, misunderstood and I don't remember what the result of that was but I think that was kind of the thing where I was saying I don't know if I knew I wouldn't be a therapy so um, and then I think that was also where I said you know I think I feel like I kind of want somebody that goes through it with me not trying to fix it or not taking it on as their own their own burden so just some interesting today was a really interesting session in that all my other sessions were kind of by the book in a sense it was very much like okay follow that emotion let's see what comes up okay this came up let's you know go this way whereas today it was a lot of this is what I want you to do and I would say well but right now when you say that my mind goes this way and so we would pivot and we would go that way and it really seemed like, I know this might sound crazy to say, but it really seemed like it was more of a challenge for her because for the first time she had to like do her own homework where she was troubleshooting like, okay, what is going to be the best method here? How do I need to pivot as a doctor to make sure that we are, you know, having something that is more productive and moving us somewhere? I did feel a little bit hopeful by the end of it. Because while nothing felt resolved and no emotion changed, I think she got a greater insight into the way that my brain works and the core emotions that I'm feeling behind all the trauma and some of it being chemical. And I think it kind of gave her a perspective that she didn't have before that now she's like, okay, I think we need to work on this over here, kind of take a break on the other stuff. Listen, I'm done talking. I've kept you here forever. Can you see the sky getting dark again? It's about to rain again. So I'm going to leave. You can't even see me in this video. Wow. That looks crazy. Okay, so it's not that dark in person. I'm going to go. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Eventually, I'll get back to normal content. But right now, this is, you know, consuming my life. Anxiety and depression is consuming my life. And when it's not, I'm trying to be present and do what I need to do for my family and for myself. So this is where we're at now. I guess I've become the EMDR channel, just like I became the hysterectomy channel when I went through that. So thank you guys for, you know, following me through all of my ups and downs. I appreciate it. And I will talk to you in the next one.